Professor Pig, and welcome to my course, The Power of Costume Change, to explore the past, present, and future of who we are, who we were, and who we could be. This week's topic is something that has been troubling me for a few months and has to do with my species. I've heard a lot of chatter about pigs recently, and it hasn't had anything to do with me or any of my compassionate, intelligent pig siblings. No. It has been about some people doing some very terrible things, who are being called pigs because of the harm they do. These people are the police, and I feel that they are giving pigs a very bad name. It turns out, people have been calling police officers pigs for many years, because the police have been doing harm for a long time. So I wanted to get to the root of how these police people came to be, and how we can explore their function and identity through the magic of costume change. This is Greg, who is playing the part of the police officer and will be our model for this presentation. Throughout history, the character of the police officer has worn many costumes and gone by many names, but he's always been the same character deep down. The character of the police officer exists not to protect people as they claim, but to uphold a fundamentally unequal society. Let's take a trip through time and space to visit some of these versions of the police officer. Greg, are you ready for your first quick change? The London Metropolitan Police, or Bobbies, founded in 1829, are considered by many to be the first modern police force. In the new industrial era, workers were unhappy, and as their labor was exploited, movements sprung up across the country to fight for workers' rights. In response, the British Home Secretary created a force to protect company property and put down strikes. In other words, to keep the workers down. So, there you have it. The central goal of the police was to maintain economic inequality. But long before the Bobbies, in the United States, the character of the police officer had existed under a different name. Let's look at the slave patrol. Slave patrols existed in the South to control black people, both enslaved and free. From 1704, more than a century before the Bobbies. Under law, most white men, even those who didn't own people, were required to serve on the slave patrol and given the authority to dispense corporal punishment on the spot, usually with a whip. The potential of enslaved people to gather, organize, and resist caused anxiety among whites, and so slave patrols especially policed the mobility of enslaved people in the public sphere. The slave patroller embodied an essential component of the police officer character, surveilling and controlling the black community. When the slave patrol system was abolished alongside slavery, this function of the police character did not disappear. New professional police forces in the South were also primarily concerned with controlling and suppressing the black community. Vagrancy laws and black codes were used as an easy way to arrest black people and force them into the exploitative sharecropping system or into forced prison labor. Meanwhile, in the North, professional police forces had existed since the 1930s, formed, like the Bobbies, to manage the growing population of industrial workers. After slavery ended, the black population of northern cities was also growing, and these police forces also became very concerned with upholding racial hierarchy. So, once again, we see the character of the police officer in another costume, upholding an unjust economic and social system. Now let's travel across the country to Texas, where the police officer will don a new costume and show us how they also have oppressed Native Americans and Mexican Americans. The Texas Rangers were established in 1823, even before Texas was a part of the U.S. The Rangers had one mission, to protect the interests of newly arriving white colonists by enacting violence against indigenous and Mexican people. Mexicans and Native Americans who resisted Ranger authority could be beaten, arrested, or intimidated, and many were killed. In 1918, Rangers massacred 15 unarmed Mexican villagers and were never charged for the murders. Sounds familiar, right? Today, 
the Texas State Police Department is still called the Texas Rangers. No big costume change needed for that one. What other costumes can we explore? Ah! The Pennsylvania State Police Force, formed in 1905, was the first in the country, founded to control resisting workers, shifting the cost burden from the factory owners to the public coffers. But peeling back that costume, we find the force was modeled after the imperialist Philippines Constabulary, using the same techniques of espionage and suppression used in the Philippines. The U.S. has, after all, been called the policeman of the world. Today, professional police forces have grown with bloated budgets and modern laws that criminalize poverty and protect property. They target black people, indigenous people, people of color, and anyone who tries to challenge their power. The violence hasn't stopped. The police murders and brutality haven't stopped, and we find ourselves in the midst of a popular uprising against it. Some people have proposed that if we simply make some tweaks to the police's costume, they may behave in a more equitable way. One reform many have pushed for is cameras. Police departments have poured millions into police body cameras, but so far, cameras have not seemed to prevent police from murdering black people in plain sight. And more often than not, when the footage is needed, the cameras have mysteriously been turned off. Another reform is community policing. Having police officers embedded in the local communities, playing ball with the kids, and hearing community wants seems like a good idea in theory. But in reality, police have no power to address systemic racism or, or poverty, and only have the power of punitive enforcement, such as ticketing, and arrests. And none of these reforms do anything to address the fact that these days, more often than not, those of us protesting in the streets most often see the policeman in this costume. As long as there are police, they are going to uphold an oppressive system. And as long as they're doing that, they're going to be rightfully despised. And as long as they are despised, they are going to be called pigs. And I cannot see that continuing. And rather than thinking of another derogatory nickname for them, or wasting time explaining why real pigs like me are amazing, I propose that this is an issue costuming cannot solve and that we get rid of them altogether. We will abolish this character and all of their costumes. Poof! Oh, Greg, you're still there and in your underwear. Oh, what's that? You want a different character to play in a new costume? Hmm, I have an idea. Greg, you can be a mime in the newly formed City Mime Corps. That's right. The mimes have health benefits, a pension, and absolutely no power over anyone other than the power of suggestion. And it's perfect for you since you seem to prefer to stay quiet. Ready? Wow, you look amazing. You know, you're not the first former police officer to become a mime. Did you know that in Bogota in the 90s, the mayor fired all of the traffic cops and instead hired experienced mimes to help manage traffic? Yes, and all of the 3,000 former traffic cops were offered the opportunity to be re-educated as mimes. And about 400 said yes. Well, folks, that's our presentation. I look forward to seeing you in the future where there are no police officers and the $6 billion NYPD budget has been redistributed to fund universal housing, education, healthcare, and food. And perhaps also the newly formed New York Department of Mimes, Clowns, Puppeteers, and other performing fools. Thank you.